we already learned the static method. Okay. The static method we learned in the first part, it was about the point. So you know what is the point? Yeah, every method here we put point. Okay. And then we put point. So in this case, uh, this is a method without written value. So the meaning by without written value is yeah, we do not need to put any value whenever we finish one method. So we will learn more things about the methods. This is still related with the static methods, but but we want to have written values. So what does it mean by written values here? Okay, we will check. So we need to understand about the data types. Now you understand about the integer, double, okay? and then there are some other objects. So for example, we learn about the string and then character. So those kind of data types will be available in the method. So for example, now there is a problem. If I want to do the sum of integer from one to 10, okay, so it means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 until 10. And then I want to do another summation from 20 until 30. And then I want to do another summation from 35 to 45. Okay. So this will be the same for every integer. Okay. So the first is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus something until 10. And then the second one is starting from 20 plus 21 plus 22 plus something until 30. And then the last one is starting from 35, 36, and then 37, and then until 45. So you can see there is a pattern here. Okay? When we see this pattern, something maybe you will see like this one. Okay, now you can think that, okay, I will make for loop. The first is to make a variable sum, and then this variable sum will start from zero. And then I will do the loop from i equals to 1 until i equals to 10. And then the variable sum will be the summation for every of the integer. So we can just print the summation from 1 until 10 is yeah, the summation. And then before we go to the second loop, yeah, we will make the variable sum equals to 0. And then we again do the loop from, okay, now the number start from 20. And then the ending is 30. And we will do the same. Sum plus equal to i. And then, yeah, you will print out the result. For the third one, again, we will make the sum equal to 0. And then we will do the for loop. And i will start from 35. And then it will end at 45. And then again, we do sum plus equal to one. Uh, sorry, sum plus equal to i. And then again, we will do the output for the summation. So you can see here, we repeat this one. One, two, three. So we repeat three times like this one. Based on this example, can you find what is the similarity between those three?
What are the similarities among those three? They are the same function. They use the plus or they use the summation function. Because they use the summation function, okay, so I can say something like this. If I can make this pattern in one uh, method, then yeah, I don't need to repeat many times. So I just need to make one method and then I call that method and I can change only the value. I can change only the value. I can change only the value. The other structures are the same. Okay, then what shall we do? So we can make one function, okay, we call it the public state. Now you can see I change this into integer. In the first part, we learn about void. When we learn about void, we do not know what is the data type and we don't need to have written. Okay. But when we have this integer, we need to return back a value. And the value should be integer. Okay. The value that we return should be the same with the data type. If this one is integer, then return sum. So this variable should be integer. If we put this one is double, then this value should be double. If this one is character, then this one should be the data type of character. Okay, so that's what we call as the method with written value. The other function or the other statement, they are the same. Okay. Sum equals to zero. And then what is it? We want to start i from i1. Okay, this is the i1, which is the starting number. And then we will look until i2. What is i2? i2 is the ending number. And for every time we do this loop, we will do the summation. And the summation will be the summation of the variable i. After we get this result, we want to return back the sum. So the main method, okay, in the main method, you will just need to call the print line and then call the function which is sum and i1 equals to 1 and i2 equals to 10. So the function will run for you and then it will do the loop from 1 until 10. If we do the second one, 20, it will go to the I1, and then 30, it will go to I2, and then I1 will be the starting number, and I2 will be the ending number. So we will do the loop from 20 until 30. <laughs> and then, because we return the sum, we will get a result here. And after we finish, we will go to the next line, which is this one. And again, we will check what is 35. Oh, 35 will be in the I1 and 45 will be in the I2. So the I1 will be here and the I2 will be here. And then we will do the summation. And then finally, we will return the value of sum and it will be shown here. So those three times, 
they have the same function or they have the same statement and we can put the statement into one method so we don't need to repeat three times we don't need to repeat this three times but we just need one method and then we just call them in very short statement like this sum one comma ten sum twenty comma thirty and sum thirty five comma forty five so let's take a look in the eclipse i think you already have method with written Okay, so this is the main method. Yeah, we have <coughs> the print out. We want to show the summation from 1 until 10, 20 until 30, and 35 until 45. Okay, and then you call sum 1, comma 10. So this sum is a method. Here we use the public static integer sum. We have two parameters. We have i1 and we have i2. And then, yeah, as I explained before, we put the i1 for the beginning of the loop and we put the i2 as the ending of the loop. I guess we need to put this equal. <clears throat> yeah, you can check later. This one, yeah, it's important to fit with this requirement. Yeah, I put this equal, but I don't know why I didn't put this equal here. Okay, anyway, you can put the equal here. The result will be different without equal and with equal. So here, you can see that with one method, yeah, it will be more efficient. Your code will be more clean. Okay? You don't need to repeat the same statement. Maybe try this. <clears throat> so summation from one to 10 is 55. So we get the values because we have the integer. So what if I change this to five? It will be error, right? Mm, yeah, I will check the attendance later from here. <clears throat> so why? Why there is an error? Because in the void, you do not need return. Now I know that this sum is integer. Then you can put this one integer. How if I put this one double? It works. Why? Because this is integer and they are the same as numbers but the result will be integer even though it is still working okay so for example if you run you can see that this integer will work as a double how if i change the character it's not working because it is a different type of data okay so you need to make sure that the data is the same yeah even though the double works for this one but i believe that it is good exercise to have the same data type between the variable that you use in the return and the definition in your method
So I can say something like this. When you have a method, <coughs> this is the formal definition. Okay. Um, yeah, you can use this formal definition. Uh, we have public. So this is the modifier or yeah, something related to the accessibility of the method. For now, let's make it all public, okay? Because there will be the possibility of this one to be private. And there will be the possibility for this one to be protected. So we need to uh, consider something if we want to change this one. For now, because you are doing the practice for making this statement, so let's just use public at this moment. Maybe after the mid exam, we will learn more about this one. Static. Okay. Now our method is static. So there is another kind of method which is non-static. So later we have the non-static. So let's just focus on this chapter about the static. So the static method means the static in the program or in the main class. Okay. And then we have the data type or the written value type. The written value type will be the same with the data type of the variable that we use here. And then you have the method name. So the method name is the same with the identifier, the same with variable. You can use any name, but do not use any Java statement. For example, you want to make a method if. Okay. So this is not allowed. So this one is not allowed because if is one of the Java statement. And then if I want to make a method named else, it's possible? No, this is also not possible because this is also one of the Java statement. So you need to think the method name which is not in the Java statement. And then we have two parameters here. Okay. We call it, this is the formal parameters, the num1 and the num2. And then, yeah, we have the method body. Okay. We already know the method body. And then we have the return. So the return value should be the same with the data type that you define here. In some literatures, they mention this one as the formal parameter, and they call it, this is the method with signature. So last time, I think we learned the signature. So method with signature means we have method with name and with a list of parameters. Okay. If we want to call this method, the name is maximum, so we call it maximum because there are two parameters, one and two. And we need to put also two parameters here, x and y. And the result of the maximum x and y, it will be z. And if you check this one, what is the meaning by this? What is the meaning by this one? So we have integer result, so it is only a variable definition. And then we have like the num1 greater than num2. So we want to check if num1 is greater than num2, then result equals to num1. So if I have like, for example, 5, and then if I have 3, something like this one, then I will check 5 is greater than 3. Okay, yes. 
because 5 is greater than 3, then result is number. Okay, now I know that it is to find the maximum value from two numbers. So given two numbers, this is a function to check which number is the maximum. So let's suppose if I make another value, okay, for example, four and six, okay. So four will be num one, six will be num two. Four is greater than six, no. Then we go to the else, and then the result will be num two. Num two is six, so we will return back the result, which is six, as the maximum value. So yeah, we know that the method signature is the combination of the method name and the parameter list. Yeah, and every method, I think you will see this one. In the method, yeah, you can find one parameter or you can find more than one parameter, which is many parameters, so, or without parameter. So the variables defined in a method header are known as formal parameters. Okay, I can say there are the formal parameters because yeah, it's just a variable. It's just a parameter and we do not know what is the value. But we call this is the actual parameters because this will have the value. Whenever you call the value, Whenever you pass this value into this variable, then yeah, you will see that there is a value here. If there is no value, you cannot run the function. So we call this one as the actual parameters. Or sometimes they call it as argument. Okay. So we call this is actual parameter or arguments. If it is in the methods, we call it parameters. But when we call something in the info in of the method, we call it this is the actual parameter or argument. So this is a method with written value. Okay? Then the written value is the data type of the method returns. So if the method does not return a value, then the return value type is the keyword point. So if the, yeah, here is point means you will not have the return statement. Okay, let's find out about the other example. We have the max method test max so this is what we see before is we have the i equals to five and j equals to two and then i want to find the maximum between i and j then the result will be in the variable k so after i call this maximum okay so I can teach you something. You can press the control. When you press the control in your keyboard, you can move your mouse and you can see this thumbnail. Okay, can you see this one? Okay, you can see this thumbnail and if you click on the thumbnail, then you will see that the cursor now is moving to your method. So if you have a lot of functions, yeah, you can just try to go, which function is it? Then just press control, okay? Con control in your keyboard. And then click on the very specific part of your code. Let's say you want to go to the maximum, then you will go to this maximum. For example, yeah, I want to know what is I. So if you click this one, then it will show you some the basic information about the i so for example this is the variable i and the other i is 
here, which is a place to print. So when you call this maximum, yeah, you have two parameters, and then you will show the result after we do this conditional. So if you run, yeah, the maximum between five and two is five. So we have the maximum between I and J is K. K is a variable, and this variable will be the result from the function. So this is a function of maximum and returns to integer. That's why the result is integer value. If you change this one to double, yeah, as I mentioned before, you can just do this one. Of course, the result will be different, which is 5.0. So the mechanism of this is something like this one. When I start with the I and J here, I will be in the num one and J will be in the num two. And then when we finish this statement, when we finish this function, we will return back this result into here. And then the value will be saved in the variable K. So if now you, you want to see this animation, okay, I start from five, J is two, and then now we info. Okay? Info means we want to call the method maximum, and then let's put I, which is five, and then J, which is two here, and we will do this num one and num two, and num one equals to I, and num two equals to J. Then we will go to the next step, which is a result. We want to declare a variable. We will check whether num1 is greater than num2. Yes, it is true. So the result equals to 5. And we finish the statement by returning the value result because it is 5. So we return the value 5 to the k. After we enter the value 5 into the K, then we print. Okay. Now, there are some uh, kind of condition. Okay. When you have the written statement, it is required for the value retaining method. Okay. So, Whenever you have this written value, you need to be very careful. For example, this one. The method shown below is logically correct. This one. Okay. If you want to get the sign, for example, uh, I want to know whether it is a positive number or a negative number or zero. Okay. So when we have this one, if n is greater than zero, let's print one. If n equals to zero, let's print zero. If n is less than zero, then print minus one. What do you think? Is it correct? Yes, this is what I call as logically correct. But when you run, okay, when you put this statement in your Java, it will be error. Okay, so this will be error. Why? Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. I, I cannot do that one. Then I will type one more time. Mm, testing. Okay. 
Okay, I will write quickly what is one. If you can type quickly, yeah, you can follow me. But if you cannot, then you can try to type it later. So I have the public static integer sign, integer n, and then I will make the curly bracket. If n is greater than zero, then return one. Okay. And then else, if n equal equal to zero, then return zero. Else, if here we put another if n less than zero, then return minus one. So you can see there is an error here. What is the error message? You need to return and add return statement. Maybe you will ask why? Because we already put this written. We put this written. We put this written. But why? We still need written statement. So if you click this one, oh, they require one more written statement. Do you know why? Anybody know what is the reason? Why this is error? If we just written n, then we cannot get what we want. If we don't put anything here, there's an error, and then the options only two add written statement or change the written type to void it means if i change this to void okay now it becomes error for the written so what you what you should do for this one okay you may confuse what should i do professor in the if function In the if function, you need to have else. Java requires you to have what if there is no such condition that is true. So, for example, the first condition is false okay we will go here if the second condition is false we will go here oh okay there's one answer thank you but here okay your answer is correct so when we go here what if this is also false there's no option okay so that's why there are two ways for the solution. We can delete this one. Okay. We assume that if it is not positive and if it is not zero, then it will be negative. Okay. That's one. Or yeah, if you want to put like n, for example, less than zero, then return minus one, and then oh, sorry. And then you can put else and else yeah return something for example if you want to return a big value then if it is a big value then it is not a value that you want for example okay so you need to put at least one else yeah i can just work with this one so this is the same with the, the result here yeah there's should be the else if there is no else then it will not work now how can i make the module for the previous problem okay so 
until your mid exam yeah you need to understand this way this is a method and then in the mid exam yeah there will be one problem about how to create a method okay. so methods can be used to reduce redundant coding and it enables code reuse and method can also be used to modularize code and improve the quality of the program so here let's see the greatest common divisor okay there's one example here okay so I know that when we are doing this greatest common divisor, we can check with many uh, numbers, okay? Maybe we want to check the 12 and 16. We want to check 10 and 20. We want to check 15 and 30. So there are many options. So you will need method because the option of the number are varied. So, you need to first enter the first integer and then enter the second integer and then you can just print the greatest common divisor for n1 and n2 is yeah, something here now you can see that the method will not be in the middle part but the method will be in the below part and the method will contain two arguments and then here there will be two parameters so the parameters one is the n1 and the second parameter is n2. So this will be the same with what we learned in the previous section. I guess here, greatest common divisor. Okay, so the statements are the same. GCD equal to one, k equals to two, and then while we do this one, we keep until the K is greater than N1 or K is greater than N2. Okay, so the same is GCD equals to 1, K equals to 1, and then we do the while loop like this one. And yeah, we need to get the latest value. So the latest value is the GCD. So in the previous statement, Okay, we have the GCD one. We want to print the GCD, but in the method, we return the GCD into the main method. So we will get the result from here. Okay. So if you ask me questions, then can we make any problems with method? Yes. So the answer is yes. And when you do your uh, team project, you will need to make method because whenever you create like the user interface, yeah, you need to make many methods. If you don't have many methods, you will not be able to create your user interface. There will be an issue okay, when you have what we call as the overloading methods. Overloading methods means you have the same method name, but it is different in the written value. So let's see the test method overloading. Mm, Now, if you have the same method name, okay, if you have the same method name, you need to be very careful. What do I mean with the very careful? When you have this maximum method, here is a method with the integer return value. 
you can have another method with the same name, but the return value should be different. Or you can have the same name of the method, but the parameter are different. Okay, so there are three possibilities. Okay. The first possibility is if the name the same, then the return value should be different. That's the first. The second is if the same name the type of the parameter should be different. That's the second. What about the third? The same method name should have different number of parameters. So there are three possibilities. Okay. So in this case, we have there's three possibilities. We have the maximum between three and four, so three comma four. So the input is integer. What about the second? Yeah, we have also two arguments, but they are double. The data type is double. What about the third one? Okay, we have three different numbers. So we have three arguments. So these three arguments here, so if I run, I want to check where is the highest among the three numbers, 3.0 or 5.4 or 10.14. So the result is 10.14. So if you take a look on this one, yeah, the this one is the simple way to do the uh, statement, I guess you still remember. If we want to use the if statement, yeah, we need to use else at the end. Okay. So in this case, if I know that num one is greater than num two, then just return back num one. Else return back num two. If I have two numbers with the double, so just return back num one if num one is greater than num two. Else Num two. What about if I have three values? As you can see here, the first part I will use the existing maximum. When I call this one, okay, now you know that this is the method that returns double. Because Java knows automatically that this number is double. Okay, so Java knows that, okay, this number is double. Then when you run this one, it will go to the double. So the double here, yeah, because I, sorry, because I define this one as double. Okay. So because I define this one as double, so we can use the maximum function which return the double value of those two numbers and then the maximum of those two numbers will be compared with the num tree so there will be one result from this function right there will be one result from this method and the number from this result will be compared with the num tree using again the same method which is max so we will get the maximum value from three double values. If we have more values, how can you handle that one? Okay, so please think about it. Okay. Okay, I think I will uh, explain the remaining parts after the break time. Okay. Any questions, comments?